Welcome. Well, it is as bad as it sounds, and we're not going to waste any time but jump right into this. Now, I want to frame this and set the stage with a couple of quotes from Charles Spurgeon and John Wesley. There's a lot of people within the Christian community, because this is such a neglected topic, that don't realize the magnitude of the importance of the Reformation, doctrinally speaking. The Protestant Reformers, as the name implies, were protesting Rome, the Catholic Church. Does that mean that they were perfect? Not by a long shot. It does, however, mean they had a legitimate protest against what was and is damnable false doctrine. So specifically, the article here is, I think the title of this is What the Protestant Reformers Thought of the Pope or the Papacy and his relation to the uh, term or the title Antichrist. John Wesley died at the, uh, at the end of uh, 1791. In many respects, the Pope has an un indisputable claim to those titles. He is, in an emphatical sense, the man of sin as he increases all manner of sin above measure. And he is, too, properly styled, the son of perdition as he has caused the death of numberless multitudes, both of his opposers and followers, destroyed innumerable souls, and will himself perish everlastingly. He is, uh, he it is that opposeth himself to the emperor, once his rightful sovereign, and that exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, commanding angels, and putting kings under his feet, both of whom are called gods in scripture, claiming the highest power, the highest honor, suffering himself not once only to be styled God or vice-God. Indeed, no less is implied in his ordinary title, quote, Most Holy Lord or Most Holy Father, so that he sitteth enthroned in the temple of God, mentioned in Revelation 11.1, 1, declaring himself that he is God, claiming the prerogatives which belong to God alone, Charles Spurgeon. Notice Wesley and Spurgeon lived in two different times. They are not talking about a specific pope, but rather the papacy itself, the very office of the pope, which is the headship of all that is the Catholic Church. Spurgeon says, It is the bounden duty of every Christian to pray against Antichrist. And as to what Antichrist is, no sane man ought to raise an objection or a question. If it be not the popery in the Church of Rome, notice the popery itself, there is nothing in the world that can be called by that name. If there were to be issued a hue and cry for Antichrist, we should certainly take up this church on suspicion, and it would certainly not be let loose again, for it so exactly answers the description. Popery is contrary to Christ's gospel and is the Antichrist, and we ought to pray against it. It should be the daily prayer of every believer that Antichrist might be hurled like a millstone into the flood for Christ because it wounds Christ. It robs him of his, uh, sorry, where is it? Uh, it robs Christ of his glory. It puts sacramental e e efficacy in the place of his atonement. It lifts a piece of bread into the place of the Savior, etc., etc. Wesley and Spurgeon both emphatically affirmed that the Pope and or the papacy was in fact the seat of the Antichrist. Uh, Baptist 1689, Baptist Confession, uh, uh, Baptist Confession, sorry. Um, let's see. Neither can the Pope of Rome in any sense be head thereof the church, but is that Antichrist, that man of sin, the son of perdition that exalts himself in the church against Christ. Westminster Confession of Faith, there is no head of the church but the Lord Jesus Christ, nor can the Pope of Rome in any sense be head thereof, but is that Antichrist, that man of sin and son of perdition that exalts himself against Christ. So uh, there are many others who said the same thing. Roger Williams, John Knox, Thomas Cranmer, John Calvin, just to name a few, Martin Luther, etc., etc. We set the stage here to make it very uh, plainly known that the Catholic Church and its headship are in fact antichrist organizations and antichrist seats there are many different antichrists the pope of rome as uh, spurgeon rightly deduced and the church the catholic church again so exactly answers this description the stage is set let's begin paul washer for those of you who do not know 
founded Heart Cry Missionary Society. He was a missionary to Peru, and uh, he he served there as a missionary for 10 years, it says, during which time he founded the Heart Cry Missionary Society. This is pretty common knowledge. Here are the board of directors. You'll notice in most of these slides, I tried to keep the website address at the top so you can verify all this for yourself. HeartCryMissionarySociety.com or missionary.com. Board of Directors, there are five listed. Two of them are Anthony Mathenia from Radford, Virginia, and Paul Washer, also from Radford, Virginia. They are neighbors. They attend the same church together. Anthony Mathenia is the pastor of this church. He is Paul Washer's friend and pastor and co-director on the HeartCry Missionary Board. Accountability, local church accountability. Heart Cry Missionary Society is under the oversight and the elders of the elders and congregation of Christ Church Radford, of course, in Radford, Virginia, where they both live. And there's a picture. Here's three of the pastor's elders, Luke Nash, Anthony Mathenia, and uh, Jamie Tucker. Heart Cry Missionary Society Latin America blog updates on the Martin Booser Seminary in Brazil. Martin Booser Seminary. All right, here's the full article. This is written in 2013, September, uh, by Luke Nash on the far left there. Him and Anthony uh, in the middle, the pastor, took a trip to Martin Booser Seminary in Brazil. And let's zoom in on those highlighted spots. Past week, I had the opportunity, along with Anthony Mathenia, pastor of Christ Church Radford and member of the Heart Cry board, to visit and meet with the leaders of Martin Booser Seminary, which in Brazil, which Heart Cry began a partnership with earlier this year. Since September of 2013, Heart Cry has been in partnership with the seminary. Uh, down below, it says that um, uh, we are our time there was not spent spent not only helpful in con considering how we can further help our brothers who are leading the seminary, but was a great encouragement, etc. Uh, further down, you see that the pray the Lord would bless the efforts of Martin Booster Seminary and grant Heart Cry wisdom as we partner with our Brazilian brothers. So, Heart Cry Missionary Society is an open partnership with the Martin Booster Seminary. Uh, no doubt, many of you have never heard of the Martin Booster Seminary. Here it is. You can see in the background, Seminario Martin Booser. There is Anthony Mathenia, pastor of Christ Church Radford, with uh, Franklin Ferreira, who is the uh, director of this Brazilian branch of the seminary. Okay, we'll get back to that in a bit. Martin Booser Seminary. The president of the entire organization, which is actually based in Europe, is Thomas Schermacher. Again, probably a name that many of you are not familiar with. He... Uh, Claims to be, it says it's a multinational evangelical seminary and research institute in the Protestant Reformed tradition. Named after the reformer, Martin Booser. Thomas Schermacher is the president of the entire organization. Here is their Wikipedia page. As you can see on the right, Thomas Schermacher is the president. They have branches in Brazil. And in partnership with the German Evangelical Alliance. Okay. Martin Booster Seminary website. Down at the bottom, you can see there's a quote from, of course, Dr. Thomas Schermacher, their president. President and rector and chair of ethics for and uh, chair for ethics and chair for comparative religions, Martin Booster Seminary. ThomasSchermacher.net, that's his own website. His own uh, bio here, he is president of the Martin Booser European Theological Seminary and Research Institutes. He is the leader of this organization. Here's his Wikipedia page, Thomas Schermacher. Um, responsible for theology and interfaith relations. Interfaith relations. On the bottom right-hand side box, you can see the employer is Martin Booser European Theological Seminary. Uh, and there's a troubling picture of him on his own Wikipedia page with Pope Francis. Pope Francis, interesting that a somebody in the Protestant Reformed tradition would be taking selfies with somebody whom Spurgeon, Wesley, etc. described as a veritable antichrist and one that embodies all that antichrist is. That's disturbing all by itself. That is quite disturbing. 
Is the Pope the Antichrist? This is his website, thomasschermacher.net. Not according to Sola Scriptura. Thomas Schermacher with his colleague and friend Thomas Johnson, also a leader of the Martin Bucer Seminary. They co-wrote this article dispelling the notion that the Pope could have anything to do with the Antichrist. So uh, every Protestant uh, reformer in their own tradition disagrees with them. Um, there's his defense. Interesting. Ah, okay. Let's just see how close Mr. Schermacher actually is with the Pope, shall we? Bringing him a book, giving him a gift. What a friend. Look at that smile. Thomas Schermacher shaking hands, greeting him with a smile. There he is, backstage, shaking his hand at a, in a private moment with another cardinal. There's Thomas Schermacher hanging out with the Pope, enjoying his communion with the Pope. Ah, bringing him another book. He's got a gift for the Pope, shaking his hand. Ah, having tea together, enjoying his time with the Pope. This is very disturbing. It's becoming very disturbing quite immediately. It, oh, it's like he sees an old friend. Tom, Pope Francis sees Schermacher upon entering. Hey, buddy, come on, bring it in for a hug. There they are, hugging each other like it's been too long. This is very disturbing. Oh, he's got a book for... Uh, uh, Joseph Ratzinger as well, former Pope Benedict, hanging out with all the Catholics, all the little antichrists, and giving gifts, shaking hands and giving gifts. That's the president of the Martin Bucer Seminary at Heart Cry Missionary Society, and Paul Washer are in partnership with and sponsor openly. Let's look at the leadership. Thomas Johnson at the bottom there is a man that we uh, we saw his name uh, just a moment ago, helped co-write the article stating that the Pope was not the Antichrist. There's another guy named Titus Volk. These are Thomas Germacher is the, the rector and Thomas Johnson, vice president for research. Notice Thomas Johnson, white hair, mustache. We're going to see them together. There they are both together, um, all three, and I believe that's Titus Volk on the right side. Those three are all members of the WEA, or the World Evangelical Alliance, with the Archbishop, Catholic Archbishop of Ghana, and the Anglican Archbishop of Sri Lanka. So there's a vice president of uh, research at the Martin Booster Seminary, along with the president itself, and uh, I believe their other uh, friend and director, all hanging out at the Vatican together. Oh, there's Thomas uh, Schermacher and Thomas Johnson there in the middle, hanging out with the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity under Kurt Cardinal Koch. Again, both members of the World Evangelical Alliance, the WEA. What is the World Evangelical Alliance? Who are they? Well, leadership team would include Thomas Schermacher, Senior Leadership Team, World Evangelical Alliance. From the VaticanFiles.org, Greater Oneness in Christ, what does it mean? The World Evangelical Alliance and the Vatican's officials for promoting Christian unity met together for the first time in a historic meeting, spending two days facilitating their support of the Global Christian Forum. Global Christian Forum press release. This was May of last year. Underneath that, it says the ecumenical meeting was historic because these leaders representing almost the whole of present-day Christianity committed themselves to work toward greater oneness in Christ. So pretty blatantly, it is an ecumenical meeting. It was billed as such, and they met the World Evangelical Alliance and Vatican officials facilitating their support of the Global Christian Forum. Huh. What is the Global Christian Forum? You're going to see these terms, world and global, very often. This is an antichrist agenda, uniting people under world headship and world unification, false unification, false religious unification. Here's the Global Christian Forum website. If you look closely at that picture, this was at their Moscow committee meeting. Let's get a little close. Yep, there he is, Thomas Schermacher, hanging out with uh, the Global Christian Forum, an ecumenical group who's Objective is to unite, unite all faiths. We look at their committee. Who's a committee member? None other than Dr. Thomas Schermacher. 
Other committee members would include representatives from the Anglican Church, the Catholic Church, uh, Church of God, the Lutherans, the Mennonites, the Pentecostals, Salvation Army, Seventh-day Adventists, Syrian Orthodox, World Communion of Reformed Churches, the World Council of Churches. Yes, the Methodist Church, uh, everybody seems to be represented in yet this other globalist and ecumenical organization. There they are at their uh, summit in Bogota, Colombia in 2018, just in April, recently. There he is speaking with the Global Christian Forum. There's the Wikipedia page, the Global Christian Forum, founded in 1998, following the proposal of then General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, Reverend Conrad Reiser, that a new independent space should be created where participants could meet on an equal basis to foster mutual respect and to explore and address together common concerns. The Global Christian Forum brought in two advantages, historic freshness and postmodern approach. Conspicuously absent from that description is a biblical approach. They were historically fresh and brought in postmodernism nonsense. But it was at the recommendation of the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches that this group be founded. Now, you've perhaps heard of the World Council of Churches. And for the record, this is all under, if you look at the top, this is the Wikipedia page for ecumenism. Under the word ecumenism, this paragraph exists. That's what the Global Christian Forum is associated with. World Council of Churches. Uh, if you'll notice on the right-hand side, there's a cross with the Greek word ecumeny. Ecumeny. What is that Greek word? It's exactly what it sounds like. Ecumenism. Ecumenical. That's what the World Council of Churches exists to do, to unite people, ecumenical, the world, the global. I think it means uh, the general land or the general populace in Greek. But the idea of ecumen ecumenism and uh, the ecumenical movement in the religious sense is to unite all religions under one umbrella. Uh, they are comprised of many different representatives. Though the Roman Catholic Church is not an official representative, they send accredited observers to their meetings. Also, notably here, the World Council of Churches has been described as taking an adversarial position toward the state of Israel. Big shock. The General Secretary was reported to claim in Cairo, We support the Palestinians. The World Council of Churches supports the Palestinians because they're right. The World Council of Churches, the Global Christian Forum, and the World Evangelical Alliance, all apostate, heretical, antichrist organizations, without question. I don't use those terms lightly, not by a long shot. Here is Thomas Schermacher at their summit with the Global Christian Forum, which is sponsored by, you guessed it, the World Council of Churches. You can see in the top left corner, there's their logo, partnering with the Global Christian Forum. World Council of Churches, there's their own website, ecumeny.org. Vatican and World Council of Church announce, Churches announce details of visit by Pope Francis in an historical milestone in the search for Christian unity and for the cooperation among the churches for a world with peace and justice. When they shout, peace, peace, do not believe them. So the Vatican, partnering with the World Council of Churches in an in historical visit they called trying to seek unity. That's who the World Evangelical Alliance is and partners with. Schermacher, both a senior leadership member of that group and a committee member of the Global Christian Forum, both of whom partner and are supported by the World Council of Churches. This is a premier ecumenist right in front of you with his friend, and co-leader of the Martin Bucer Seminary. There's Thomas Schermacher, the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity. Yep, immersed in a sea of apostasy. There he is. Thomas Schermacher, with many friends in the Catholic Church, Archbishop of San Cristobal de la Habana. There's again the Ghanan and the uh, Sri Lankan Anglican Archbishop. There's Thomas Johnson and Thomas Schumacher both hanging out with Cardinal Turan. Very friendly with all the priests and the popes and everything that is the harlot church of Rome. 
Yes, Thomas Schermacher is quite close with all of these people. Scarcely does he object to a photo op. If I didn't know better, I'd say he had his personal photographer traveling with him to take these pictures just so he could promote the nonsense that he's immersed in. The Syriac Orthodox patriarch. Here he is. He's trying to unite everyone and anyone. Now, I don't say this lightly. But this man, and I hate to get into speculation, gives every indication that he is very likely a Jesuit. Uh, this is not provable because the Jesuits, for those of you that don't know, are a counter-reformation group within the Catholic Church. Their whole objective uh, was to undermine and counteract the effects of the Protestant Reformation by subversion and infiltration. That's what the Jesuits do. They infiltrate organizations, uh, masquerading as something that they're not. So you would never know. It would be impossible to prove, uh, except for some that are vocal, like Pope Francis himself. Some people are open Jesuits. Others of them uh, disguise themselves as other things uh, to infiltrate other organizations and slowly lead them back to Mother Rome. Well, this man is so friendly with the Catholic Church, uh, it, it reeks of Jesuit material. Again, I hate to jump into uh, conspiracy theories and, and, and conjecture and speculation, uh, but the Jesuits are a very real organization. Their, their work is surreptitious by nature, and this man is about as devilish as they come. He is with everybody, but it's not just the Catholic Church. Muslim president of Albania, Buhar Faik Nishani, Muslim president, what kind of power is it that Thomas Schermacher wields that he has an audience with presidents of foreign nations? Sheikh Mansour, yes, he is friendly with Muslim leaders as well. The Imam of Lahore, this man is the leader of the world's second largest mosque, and there is Thomas Schermacher hanging out with him. A caliph of Ahmadiyya Muslim, here he is, the Fazl Mosque, first mosque in London. Schermacher couldn't wait to get a photo op with a man who is teaching in a religion that says that God has no son. According to John the Apostle, this is Antichrist as well. There are many different Antichrists. No wonder then that these men have intimate communion as they are both flying, railing against the Lordship of Jesus Christ in every possible sense. Sufi Islam world leader, there's Thomas Schermacher. With Muslim leaders and Catholic leaders, Syriac Orthodox leaders, with all of the religious leaders of the world, it is a special power that Mr. Thomas Schermacher has to garner an audience with these people. The general secretary is with the Pope Francis in the center. The Pope greets Thomas Schermacher. This is on Schermacher's own website. There he is with his friend again, enjoying his friendship with the Pope. There's Thomas Schermacher with the Pope and a sea of other heretics. John and Carol are not part of the New Apostolic Reformation. Self-professed apostles, friends with Bill Johnson, Lou Engel, uh, Mike Bickle, that whole lot. Kenneth Copeland, a name many people are f familiar with, uh, claims that he and his wife can control the weather and uh, is a, a self-professed billionaire, etc. The, the guy has been a charlatan and a profiteer for years. Tony Palmer on the right side. A Catholic representative who went to Kenneth Copeland's church a couple years ago and called for the Reformation to be over while Pope Francis gave an address. And Kenneth Copeland, the snake in front of you, uh, said that we, uh, we need to pray for unity, wildly misquoting Ephesians 4 and saying that we should unite with who Charles and uh, Spurgeon and John Wesley rightly called an Antichrist, or rather the Antichrist. And there's Thomas Schermacher right behind him. There they are, praying before their meal together, all in cahoots. And yep, there's Thomas Schermacher, of course, eating at the same table. Yep, there's Thomas. And just to the right of that circle, his friend and colleague, Thomas Johnson, sits in the background. Thomas Johnson, co-leader with him of the Martin Booser Seminary, with whom Part, uh, Heart Cry Missionary Society is partners with. Yes, Thomas is the president of Martin Booser Seminary. Thomas is seen here with his friend Franklin Ferreira. We saw his picture earlier with Anthony Mathenia. Franklin is the director of the Brazilian branch of the Martin Booser Seminary. The general, the director general. Franklin, director of Martin Booser Seminary. 
under the direct leadership of Thomas Schermacher. Yes, here's Franklin's Facebook page welcoming in open arms his leader and colleague Thomas Schermacher and his wife Christine. Why wouldn't he? They're his, that's his boss after all. Uh, here more recently, just a couple months back in February of 2018, they're hanging out together in Germany, in Bonn, Germany. Yep, on a little vacation together. Traveling to see the pulpit where German reformer Martin Bucer preached. Yes, Franklin is not only a colleague of, but a close personal friend of Mr. Thomas Schermacher. There they are, hanging out on vacation together. There they are preaching together, Martin Bucer Seminary, Seminario there. Now look at the bottom of that poster, Martin Bucer Seminary, and who is sponsoring it? That's right, none other than Heart Cry Missionary Society and another organization called Fiel Ministries. Fiel Ministries, notice that big F. We'll see them in a second. These are two of the sponsors of premier ecumenist and Pope lover Thomas Schermacher and his little weaselly friend Franklin Ferreira. Yep, Franklin, seen here with Paul Washer's pastor, Anthony Mathenia, the director of the Martin Bucer Seminary in Brazil. Yes, Anthony Mathenia, one of the directors of Heart Cry Missionary Society, along with Paul Washer himself. There they are, together, two of the head uh, leadership team of the entire seminary, the president himself and the director. Feel Ministries, who supports? There's Feel, right, on the bottom, supporting Martin Bucer Seminary. Who are they? There's a roundtable they did with Paul Washer and what? Oh, Franklin Ferreira. Yep, they did a roundtable together. Their faithful conference. Yep, there they are speaking at a conference together. This is in 2013, right about the time that they established their formal partnership, Franklin and Paul Washer. This uh, advertisement here is in Portuguese. But there they are speaking at a conference together for three days co-authoring this little magazine together. Franklin Ferreira, Paul Washer, and uh, Stephen Lawson. <clears throat> that name sounds familiar, doesn't it? Here's another conference, field conference in 2015. You got Thomas Schermacher, the Pope-loving ecumenist, and his colleague Franklin Ferreira with who? That's right, Stephen Lawson and Conrad Mabui, or Mbu. I'm not sure how you say it. Who are these two guys? Don't they look familiar? I thought they did. There's Paul Washer at the uh, Reformation 500 conference underneath Stephen Lawson. And underneath him, there's Conrad Mabui. Oh, there's Phil Johnson right below him. There's Todd Friel up there toward the right. Tim Challies in the center. D.A. Carson, Vody Bauckham, Anthony Mathenia. That's right. All of these guys intimately connected. Even James White's up there. Stephen Lawson and Conrad, part uh, intimate uh, fellowship uh, with the entire MacArthur camp. There's Paul Washer and Conrad. Conrad, the man that partners with Thomas Schermacher and Franklin Fedetta, but no wonder, so does Paul Washer. Oh, there's Conrad with John MacArthur. That's right, John MacArthur, friends with this lack of discretion as well. Uh, not surprising, John MacArthur is uh, lacking in discretion altogether himself. There he is with Stephen Lawson chumming it up in their pharisaical uh, chuckles. Todd and Phil hanging out with Conrad and John. Conrad, partner of Thomas Schermacher. Yep, that's the discretion of Conrad and Stephen Lawson. Franklin is under the direct leadership of Thomas Schermacher. They're close personal friends. They're both sponsored by Heart Cry Missionary Society and Fiel Ministries. They're both leaders of the Martin Booster Seminary with whom uh, Heart Cry is an intimate partnership with. Now, let's look at Feel's website. Who else is in partnership with them? Nine Marks, Mark Dever's organization, Desiring God, John Piper, Grace to You, Phil Johnson and John MacArthur, Heart Cry, Paul Washer, Ligonier Ministries, uh, formerly R.C. Sproul and crew, The Gospel Coalition, Marxist, Tim Keller, The Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. You got a friend of Rick Warren, Al Moeller, that represents them. Brilliant. And not surprising at all. That's who partners, notice it says, our partners with Fiel Ministries, the supporters of Thomas Schermacher. Oh, well, there's Franklin and John Piper. Big shocker there at the Gospel Coalition conference, hanging out with John Piper, him and his cohort. Oh, hanging out with Mark Dever, 
There's nothing surprising about this. Mark Dever is a bag of folly. His best friends with Russell Moore. Russell Moore helps build mosques and also fancies himself at the Vatican with Rick Warren and N.T. Wright. Russell Moore is a, a heretical mess, and Mark Dever is a friend and partner of his. Nice, intimate network of folly. Up oh, and there's the Marxist founder of the Gospel Coalition himself, Timothy Keller, with Franklin Ferreira. That's who Franklin is, but of course we already know he's a partner of Thomas Schermacher, premier ecumenist and pope lover Thomas Schermacher. Franklin, the director general of the Martin Bucer Seminary in Brazil under the direct leadership of pope-loving ecumenist Thomas Schermacher. Why, oh why pray tell, is Heart Cry Missionary Society in partnership with a seminary who has as its head one of the most disgusting displays of ecumenism I have ever seen in my life. Bless the efforts of Martin Bucer Seminary. Grant heart cry wisdom as we partner with our Brazilian brothers we began a partnership with. This has been going on for nearly five years. Heart cry is in partnership with not merely the seminary, but with this man. This man is the leader of the seminary. And no wonder, here's one of their representatives, Igor Diaz, teacher and evangelist in Brazil. Where does he study? Well, his theological studies are at the Martin Bucer Seminary. That's right, Heart Cry Missionary Society sends its representatives to the same seminary. This man is being educated under the direct leadership of a Pope-loving global ecumenist. That is the discretion of Heartcry Missionary Society. Are you starting to feel disturbed yet? Anthony Mathenia and Franklin Ferreira hanging out with the Martin Booser banner in the background under the direct leadership, presidential authority of Pope-loving ecumenist Thomas Schermacher and close personal friend of Franklin Ferreira, Franklin that partners with Paul Washer at conferences. Yes, Franklin the friend of Schermacher. That's the discretion we're exercising? This man? This man is the president of the Martin Bucer Seminary and nobody knows it? You've got to be kidding me. Or do they know? What's the answer? Well, I'll tell you who knows about this information. Here's some of the people that do know. A gentleman by the name of Dennis, who lives in uh, Europe somewhere, perhaps Germany, has sent me a whole host of emails over the course of the last several months concerning this very topic topic Dennis seemed to be very concerned about this I looked into it some of the people that Dennis has sent multiple multiple emails to about this exact topic would include look toward the top there a Bible thumping wingnut a uh, gentleman's name is Tim Hurd Tim Hurd he's a good friend of J.D. Hall of Pulpit and Pen and partner with uh, partners with them and promotes Pulpit and Pen's materials. Uh, th this guy is a, a joke if, if there ever was one. I, I feel like he desires attention more than he desires truth. Uh, that's evidenced by not only some of the things he says, but clearly the things he refuses to say. Tim Hurd knows exactly what's going on. He's received several of these emails. Despite Justin Peer, uh, Peters' uh, calm and, and generally pleasant demeanor and correct assessments of word faith heretics, Justin Peters is quite the hypocrite. Justin knows all about this too and has been conspicuously silent. Of course, there's J.D. Hall. We've exposed him thoroughly as being a hypocrite. I've uh, obscured part of his email address as hit that particular address looks to be a very personal one. All of the rest of these are uh, readily available email addresses. Jeff Maples, Contributor of Pulpit and Pen, another hypocrite, knows all about this, says nothing. Grace Life Pulpit, Christ Church Radford, No Compromise Radio, that's a joke. It should be called uh, Some Compromise Radio. That's headed by Mike Abendroth, who likewise refuses to comment on any of this. Why would he? It would jeopardize his good standing with these people and, you know, personal um, sal uh uh, salvaging their personal relationships means more to them. G3 Conference, he sent emails to them. President of the Master's Seminary, uh, Together for the Gospel, An another man named Sonny Hernandez, Seth Dunn from Pulpit and Pen, Talkback. All of these people have received the same emails I have. 
Here's the subject. Is Paul Washer partnering with Dr. Schermacher in Brazil, favorite Protestant of Pope Francis? Yes, since September of 2013, nearly five years. Heart Cry Missionary, you can see all of these links here are generally all of the links that I've already shared with you. Now, J.D. Hall also mentioned this when I spoke with him on the phone. He said a gentleman by the name of Dennis had sent him a bunch of emails telling him about this guy named Thomas Schermacher, who no doubt most people watching this had never heard of until today. So J.D. Hall investigated a little bit and even wrote an article about Thomas Schermacher at Pulpit and Pen. This was last uh, January, January of 2017. He says of Schermacher here, To say the least is a dangerous man who has made ecumenism and kissing the feet of the Pope his personal mission in life. Very true. Schermacher and the Pope have a peculiar friendship, I'll say. Schermacher is referred to as the Pope's most beloved Protestant, and for good reason. Uh, very correct assessments. He goes on to say, in conclusion, men such as Albert Muller, David Platt, Mark Dever, Legan Duncan, and others such as John MacArthur and Paul Washer, who have had various dealings with him, shall be compelled to do their due diligence before partnering with this worker of lawlessness or anyone under his academic leadership. Well, it seems like J.D. Hall addressed it, didn't he? I mean, he wrote an entire article saying that uh, Thomas Schermacher is a worker of lawlessness. And while that is a true assessment, I want you to note that this is comparatively and drastically nebulous and soft uh, compared to the articles that they normally write. If anybody's familiar with pulpit and pen, they pull no punches when an article has passed the, uh, made its way to the, the printing table. It's cutthroat. That's the objective, is to expose. But when it comes to people in their own camp, notice this language, various dealings. They shall be compelled to do their due diligence before partnering with this worker of lawlessness. Not at all mad or upset that they had partnership with him. And given that it's been a year and a half since this was written and nothing has changed, mum's been the word in the pulpit and pen camp. Why haven't they said anything? Various dealings, J.D. Hall? This says Heart Cry began a partnership. A partnership. And they asked to bless the efforts of Martin Booser Seminary. Hardly what I would characterize as various dealings. This is overt partnership. This is partnering in conferences with the leaders of this seminary, this man Franklin under the direct leadership and friendship of Thomas Schermacher, the man of lawlessness, he described, various dealings? Heart Cry is a sponsor of Martin Booster Seminary, not what I would call various dealings. Sponsors and partners. Yes, Thomas Schermacher, the Pope-loving ecumenist, is not in various dealings with Heart Cry and Paul Washer, but is in open partnership with them as the leader and representative and president and rector of Thomas of Martin Booster Seminary. He is in direct partnership with Heart Cry Missionary Society, whose founder is Paul Washer. Now, what would be the best defense? Tell me why this is happening. Tell me how this happened. How in God's name did this happen? For almost five years now, this has been happening. Now, somebody might say, well, they didn't know who he was. No, nobody knew this about Thomas Schermacher. Why not? Why not? Did they blindly enter into a partnership with a seminary without ever inquiring as to who the leadership was and what they stood for? If so, it would be such a gross act of negligence, it would be comparable to leaving your baby in a, in a baking car in mid-July. You didn't know? It'd be, it'd be more comparable to taking your children and dropping them off at the uh, abandoned uh, shack on the corner with some, some shady-looking people and just saying, uh, we'll leave them here to be babysat. We're going out for the night. You don't know who you're subjecting people to? You don't know who you're subjecting God's people to? You are pointing the sheep of God in the direction of a man who is in all likelihood a Jesuit and clearly an ecumenist, clearly a devilish man, 
the best excuse you might have is we didn't know. If that's the case, if that's the case, the negligence is of such a high caliber as to necessitate the immediate removal and or stepping down of every one of those five board of directors on Heartcry's board, including Paul Washer himself and Anthony Mathenia. You guys are the board, and you didn't vet Thomas Schermacher before you partnered with Martin Booster Seminary? You didn't vet Franklin Ferreira before you started doing conferences with him? Before you started uh, co-authoring magazine uh, scripts with him and promoting the seminary? What kind of fraudulent nonsense is this that that one slipped by you, if that's your defense? Or worse, you know exactly who they are, and you just don't care. So which one is it? You're negligent? or you're apathetic. Either way, you're disqualified from ministry. This is disgustingly bad in every possible way. This is not a light matter. You're talking about a globalist, an ecumenist, whose sole objective is to unite world religions. This is the spirit of Antichrist hard at work from a man who, again, despite the speculative nature of it, I must say, gives every indication that he is a Jesuit. And even if he's not, what he's doing is devilish. You don't have to put a title on it. The man's a devil. I don't care what he calls himself. And you don't know who this is? You don't know what you're partnered with? You want the efforts of their seminary to be blessed? You've got to be kidding me. How did this happen? I'm going to let Paul Washer's words address this as we close this out. These are Paul Washer's own words with regard to false teachers and those who neglect the gospel. But I want you to listen to the eerily prophetic nature of them as it pertains to this particular episode and others like it. They ought to kick most pastors out of their practice because out of cowardice or self-preservation they will not preach the gospel. That's all there is to it. This job's not for cowards. It may be for wild men and fools, but it's not for cowards. I'm telling you, there's too much at stake. Too much at stake to allow this to happen any longer. And it'd be different if it was happening in churches that denied the deity of Christ or substitutionary atonement. But this stuff goes on every day in, men, in men's churches who hold to these truths. But when they get to the gospel, they just seem to lose their minds. When they get to their own camps here, they just seem to lose their minds because out of cowardice or self-preservation, they will not call a spade a spade. Why did J.D. Hall deliberately refuse to tell you what these quote-unquote various dealings were? Because he's got John Calvin t-shirts to sell on his website. He's in marketing. Fraudulent, ridiculous, pharisaical. Pick a word. I don't have anything positive to say. For a man that can see so much truth, for a man who can tell you clearly Tim Keller's a Marxist and a danger to truth. For a man who could tell you Beth Moore should be avoided. Why won't he tell you this? God forbid it should interrupt his sale of t-shirts. This is ridiculous. The Bible-thumping wingnut? No compromise radio? Justin Peters? For a man who has said so much truth? What are you witnessing? Exactly what Paul Washer said. Out of cowardice or self-preservation, they will not say what's true. This applies to Paul Washer. Shame on you. I used to respect you. I used to recommend you. I learned a lot from you. This saddens me and angers me all at once. You have taken God's sheep and you're feeding them into the, into the arms of an ecumenical Pope-loving devil like Thomas Schermacher, partnering with the Martin Booster Seminary. Zero discretion, almost five years under the radar. And all of these so-called discerners have the same information I have and didn't say a word about it. Various dealings. Oh, they won't tell you what those dealings are. He, there's no follow-up a year later, a year and a half later, nothing's changed. There's no follow-up. Why? Because it will rob them of their platform. It will put them outside of the good graces. God forbid they should forfeit a coveted invitation to the Shepherds Conference, bunch of idolaters, you bunch of Pharisee hypocrites. This is pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Every member of that Heart Cry Missionary Board should be removed immediately. They should remove themselves and step down. Barring legitimate contrition, absolute repentance, and open rebuke of all the Martin Booster Seminary is and stands for, these men are in cahoots with them. 
separating themselves is not enough. Until or unless you hear open rebuke and re recanting and repudiation of all of this, there is a massive problem looming, and the problems have only just begun. There is a lot to be said. The spirit of Antichrist is hard at work, and the men that are supposed to know better are dropping the ball. How sad, how pathetic, how disgusting. Because out of cowardice or self-preservation, they will not do it. He was right. This men, this job isn't for cowards, maybe for wild men. How can you preach the gospel and allow something like this to happen? Partner with a man who's in bed with Rome? Who Charles Spurgeon said is clearly the Antichrist? Who John Wesley said is clearly the Antichrist? There's nothing else that fits the description better? Absolutely pathetic and disgusting. But this is where we're at. There's a lot more to be said. There's a lot more on the way. God help you all. God help the hypocrites that are allowing this to take place. When silence replaces truth, that silence is a lie. To him who knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. Pathetic. You bunch of cowards the whole lot. You should be ashamed of yourselves. This is not a light matter. And several people have some explaining to do. God help you all.